is Claire Fowler, and I'd like to welcome you to our basic mediation training. The purpose of this course is to give you confidence with the mediation process and your individual skills as a mediator. This is a five-step process entitled SONAR, S-O-N-A-R, which stands for Statement, Opening, Negotiation, Agreement, and Resolution. So we're really comfortable in the statement phase, talking about how happy everything is. We're pretty good at the opening phase, helping to draw the right information out. Okay, that fascinates a lot of mediator types. If C was your number one, how can you use the skills that you learned this week? People who say that they're conventional as their top one often work in grievances, they work in HR, they are an expert witness, a conflict examiner, or a firm manager. This course includes substantive written materials for you to include in your practice. Okay, so can you turn to your note-taking form? It's page 28. sounds to me like he's really representing an interest. What he's or maybe make sure that she's using her time more efficiently. So as he's talking, I'm writing down notes about what he's saying. I don't know about full disclosure because I guarantee whatever I say, when she goes to the bathroom, it's going on Facebook. Take a, a seat and let me just make some introductory remarks about um, how this process is going to work. I've been doing this. Well, thank you guys both for being here today and for being willing to, to meet with me. Um, like I said, my name is Justin. Um, I'm here to, to help you guys in this process, this mediation. Okay, but let's talk through that even more. Listening and letting the other person know that they're not just sitting there gathering ammunition for how they're going to respond, but starting to plan. I'll just stand here. I'll have the other guy walk by, and I was like, "This is a bad idea." <laughs> Remember, you are the mediator. People are really honoring you. They're really entrusting you with quite a bit of faith here. And. Very well. We're not attacking the person anymore, we're attacking the problem. So this is one of your key ground rules. Mediation is like Vegas. Whatever happens in mediation stays in mediation. This is the chance to build up your mediator bank account because later you're going to need to be withdrawn. And you could tell there was a lot more because when you ended it, it wasn't like, oh, okay, I've told my story. It was very clipped. It was, I'm only telling the bare minimum and he's gonna have to drag it out of me. And you did. You did this very nice transition into, thank you. And could you tell me a little bit more about that? And then it was good. Then she could start to relax. It was a comfortable space. And then she did start to talk a lot more. Right. Hi, hi, I'm Claire. I'm Bob Smith. Nice oh, to meet hi you. Hi, Bob. What do you, do you do? Oh, I'm a mediator. Mediator? Yeah. What's that? Well, a mediator is a uh, neutral party, uh, like a it's facilitator. It's kind of like being a referee at a gladiator fight, but different. I uh, like it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's two people that have a dispute about something. I'm the one that can, I'm the neutral party that can go in there oh. and try and help them resolve it. Or issue. groups that are fighting and can't come to some sort of resolution to help them talk to each other and come up with something that they can both be happy with, keep their problems out of court, keep uh -huh. them from punching each other, keep them out of jail. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that kind of mediation, oh, yeah. they get to kind of control a little more of the outcome, and in court, you're told what to do. Okay. Oh, that's right. interesting. Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it, we have a date. <laughs> Mediation is a way of uh, helping people come to an agreement that can serve as the basis for uh, resolving the dispute. Okay. Thank you. That was really clear. <laughs> I have no questions. That was really good. <laughs> Uh, whereas the first phase, your whole job is to say, hi, Justin, 
I want you to feel safe. This is a happy place. Okay, so that's the warm, fuzzy phase. And then we move into openings, and this is more the art phase. This is where you have to have a very gentle, deft hand as a mediator. So what I hope you guys are starting to realize is mediators get a whole lot of hats. We believe that buying a car should be a pleasant experience. So this is why every used car salesman also comes along with a mediator. If you were to move a little bit on this price, <laughs> you typically have very good social skills and are very sociable, so that mirror neuron stuff that we talked about in the beginning, you help to set the stage for people to feel comfortable having a conversation. So this is our imagery for those visual people. This is what um, we're working I typically meet with lawyers ahead of time if they're there, and I say, this is my process, and I would love to be on the same team here so we can reach the best agreement. So what would be great for me is if you let me speak during this first phase, you let me speak directly to the clients during the second phase so they really feel heard. So then they're ready to move on and start reaching a collaborative solution during that third phase. And that third phase is where I would really like your help. And so uh, I feel like once you're on the same page with somebody, then it can be a really great synergy. All right? And they wouldn't want these desires to be revealed to the other side. But I will be a good mediator. I will be effective if I can have these desires met as well. If you hit the price first, what would make me a little bit nervous is if we hammer out the really big one, and it's really tough, and you saw there was barely any overlap there. So both sides would, wouldn't feel 100% comfortable with the deal. They'd feel OK with it, but barely. So I would be very nervous that if we got agreement on that price with that tiny little window in there, and then if I went back and said, okay, good, so now let's talk about reliability. Do you feel like this is reliable? <laughs> then it's, it's a tenable enough agreement that they both might want to say, you know what, I'm not comfortable with this, okay? So <clears throat> when we get stuck like this, sometimes I'll, I'll have one page that's just for agreement, one page that's just for the negotiation, and then I'll do another page that now I call my trim page. So this is all of the things that we can add or take away from this deal, all of the possible options. And then we can start to check them off as we talk about them. Okay, if and I, I identify what are the agenda items, all right? So what are the main things that we talked about yesterday? I think we began with talking about safety, right? Okay, what else? And let's go even farther than that, okay? Because this still isn't that clear. PTA will find a volunteer. So PTA, need, we need to clarify that a little bit. Because we'll I could just volunteer. say, I found one. Yeah. I'm done. Yeah. We'll Good for me. <laughs> and somebody else could pick it up. That they would have a clear enough roadmap here that they could step in and do exactly what you guys were planning on doing. All right? So this, inf this agreement was good, but it carried with it a lot of context. Okay? You guys had already had that conversation. So there was a lot of unwritten agreement going on here. And that's the stuff that's murky, that people forget about. Have we met all of this? Have we met the specifics regarding payment, as in who is doing what? <laughs> Within the last <coughs> five years, it's changed so much so that they now get a claim about a mediator malpractice uh, about once a week. So when we first enter into mediation, people will tell you long and loud and clear what their positions are. They will tell you, this is what I want and this is why I want it. They might not have any idea why, but they are really good at telling you, this is what I want. What's the escalation here? What is this actually representing for both sides? So this will be the conclusion of your mediator statement. I don't know. I would have been pretty mad if you had to turn the <laughs> TV on <laughs> if it was me. Well, where do I go? <laughs> right. Okay. So, all right. Let's break it down. So, who are the two parties in this conflict? Mother daughter. And again, just about any time somebody walks into your mediation room, there is that slight power imbalance. It could be a boss. It could be a coworker. Uh, power imbalance could be from gender, race, social standing, how much money you make, what kind of car you drive. Or it could be completely assumed that somebody is just very confident, and so they're going to walk in and take the power. And as the mediator, um, it's your job to just erase as much of that as you can and to try to make it an equal playing field so that people are comfortable 
sharing their stories. Wanted, if they liked staff member B and wanted staff member B to keep their job, but really change these few things in their behavior, then mediation could have been very appropriate. Probably would have been shuttle mediation, where you're meeting privately with one person and then the other person. But those kinds of outcomes are probably not the outcomes that you could get in a courtroom. And then we're over here to S, right? It's our mm -hmm. final? OK. Uh, so the social people typically use their dispute resolution skills as a therapist, a coach, working in employee relations, a social worker, teaching dispute resolution sessions, or a counselor. Then we move on to the R's. So these are the realistic one because for them it's often more of a physical thing. They have a, a physical reaction and a connection to the conflict, so they become much more determined to resolve it. And people can feel that. You know, they feel that there's kind of a partnership with the mediator. The mediator is rolling up their sleeves, and we're getting into this, and we're, we're partners. We're going to do this out together. All right? So that's one of your main strengths, is partnering with your clients and having them feel like they really have an ally in the middle of their conflict. So the transformative mediator is more interested in taking this lump of clay and making it a beautiful vase. All right? So they're interested in... Uh, taking a difficult conflict and making it beautiful, but more than that, taking a person who might not have been handling conflict in the best way and teaching them how to handle conflict better in the future. All right?